giving me the chance to be here, speaking to you and inviting me. And uh, apologize if my English is not precise enough, in particular in the, in the technical words. So, uh, this, talk, this talk is uh, about one hour, but since English has shorter words than Spanish, it's too short. So, let's start. I, I, I'll start this talk with, the, with this ant. Do you know it? Do you know this ant? Yeah. You know the ant? This atomic ant. It's a cartoon from the 50s or something, yeah. 60s, 70s. And, and in, when I do this talk for uh, general audiences in Spain, this is a time line. Time border. So there's people who know it, and the time is. So it and, and that makes me uh, aware of who I am. So this is the topic. I'm going to speak about ants. I'm not, I'm not a big fan of ants. Uh, I think they're rather rated. They're nice. But I prefer bees much more than ants. I think one of the reasons that, that people love, love ants so much is because of these properties called these the emerging properties. So that if you if you take an ant and observe its brains or whatever they even have inside, uh, there's nothing that explains how ants can construct bridges mm -hmm. like this. There's nothing in the ant, in an individual ant, that explain, explains this. As the group that explains it. And these emerging properties, the properties that an individual Acquires because of being part of a group. So it is this because of the group that individual ants can collaborate to do bridges. There's a gap here, so the, this ant uh, group uh, can build a bridge just to pass. And then, so that's, this is called uh, in some uh, places the collective intelligence. That does make sense. And people say, big fans of it. So we are, we are more intelligent together. We we are we are right when we are together. We're more right when we are together. Yeah, okay, we can be more wrong when we are together as well. And that's what I'm speaking about. How we can be wrong when we are together. More wrong than we believe. And how mathematics is playing this. Is that okay? That makes sense to you? Uh, okay, so let's start. Uh, this is a lecture in, in the end. So I will lecture you about graph theory. Uh, I believe you're aware of graph theory. Just a quick reminder, okay? So a graph, a graph is a set of entities, objects, okay? and, and so we, we normally draw them like with these pictures of plot, dots and, and lines joining the dots. Uh, so this could be anything. This could be cities. This could be persons or books or research papers or words, whatever. It could be, for instance, you. This group of people. Mm -hmm. Each dot could be uh, one of the persons here, and two persons. Uh, and we also have relations uh, among these entities, these individuals. Here, for instance, maybe uh, two dots, two persons are related if they work together, or if do you have your phone number, uh, something like that. Okay. So this could also be cities or persons in the party and. Two people are related, two objects are related, and if they talk, for instance, in the bar, so this could be the bartender, this could be the mathematician, this could be, I don't know, the engineer, probably. So there's, there's how we describe a group and relationship in a group, we can do basically everything with graphs. I like it, for, do you know this drawing where you have to draw the, this picture without uh, the, the pen from the paper and without passing twice at the same time. So I used this in high school. I was a high school teacher for 20 years, years ago. And I used this, I know if you have that in, in your countries. Here in Spain we have an invention made by the devil and death, which is called the Guardias. Guardias is well for 20 minutes. So you're, you're in high school. And uh, the Spanish language teacher is on a, on a tree with her students. Uh, and the students say fourth grade, but, but, the, but the students in fifth grade, they, they have a, a lecture with her. 
He says, wait. He says, what happens with this chicken? So there's another teacher coming to this. Is, is that the other? There's another teacher coming to you. You know that? So that, that's terrible. Because you don't want to. The, the children don't want to. So what we do? Nobody, nobody, nobody will say, this is the teenagers. Nobody will say, do, do, do your homework. And they will say, no, we don't have it. It's a lie. They do. Always. But study for exams. We don't have an exam. That's a lie. So they, they're, they're some, somehow challenging you. And what I did was this drawing. So I asked them for this drawing and people would do it. And then I asked for this other one and people would try to do it. But this one is impossible. You can't do this. And how you find out you can't do this? Using graph theory. And that's when I try to explain them about graph theory and I teach them how to invent or design these drawings to challenge the parents of it. So let's, back, let's come back here to the graph for a second we, to, to settle the terminology. So the, the dots are called uh, vertices or nodes in, in graph theory or network theory. And the uh, connections are called connections in network theory or edges in graph theory. And the number of edges, uh, vertexes incident to it is called the degree of the, of the node or the edge or the, the node or vertex. So this is degree two. Uh, everyone agrees on this? Degree two, three, three, one, two, one, zero. Okay? Okay. So how do you find out if, if one of these drawings is possible or not? Then you check the, you don't see the, the corners here or the meeting points as nodes and the lines as connections. And if this drawing has, if, if every node has an even degree, then it is blue. If every node has an even degree, it is blue. If every node except two uh, of them have even degree, then it is blue. But you, you have to start in one of the odd degrees, odd nodes, and finish in the other odd degree. But, but it is still possible. But the only way to do it is starting and finishing in an odd degree node. There is no graph with a single odd node. That's a theorem. And you can prove it yourself. It's a nice theorem. Easy to prove. And if there is more than two nodes with a not degree, then it is a new it's impossible. It doesn't matter who you are. If you're the, the, the strongest boy in school or the finest boy in school, whatever, you can't do it. Um, um, you see this one. There's mm, degree three, 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 three. So there's four notes with another degree. So this no, is impossible. And I try to explain them why and why this this theorem, which goes back to all that, is true and so on. It was it was nice. So I, I love graph theory because of this. It is a very well settled discipline in terms of mathematics. This is a well settled area. This is a well established area. Uh, this is the journal of graph theory. The, the, the daughter of, of graph theory is network theory, complex network theory. So these are different network models, which is network theory, network theory, complex network theory. It's a mixture of graph theory, combinatorics, and statistics and probability and, and all the tools that are the run from the field. So these are different models for different kinds of networks and this is a very, very studied uh, field. It's a, it's a very important field these days because we are surrounded by networks. Okay? Any since so far? Everything is fine? You relax. So let's go on. Uh, gra graphs are used in, so this is for instance a protein, and this uh, study in biology, chemistry, and, and, and many places. So what do we study when we, when we uh, study networks? What questions do we? Uh, the first question is questions about nodes. What is the most important node in your life? Which, is, which one is the most important? The one with highest degree? Maybe, or could be for some problems. What, what other uh, criteria could we have to determine which node is the most important? There's several, and this is part of what graph theory does. 
So this is an example. So this is a small example. This this you are going to figure out what, what the numbers are. And these figures are the degree, right? The degree of the What is this? This is the the final of the football soccer um, world championship in 2010 in South Africa, which was played by the Netherlands and Spain. Is this a, anyone from the Netherlands? Here? I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. I mean no offense. But yeah, the Netherlands is a country that came here to be safe. Which is fine. <laughs> because they're very good at everything. So, Except it's, football. It's, no, no, they're very good at everything. So what happened here? This is this is a, a, a work. This is a publication, a paper from a group in the Queen Mary University, and this is a group that studied used graph theory to study football teams. And they they made a graph, as you can see. Uh, the nodes are players, and the connections are when the player passes the ball to them. Uh, the color of the the arrow is darker if this player made more, more passes, and it's thicker if these passes were successful. Okay? So they have the graph. It's a directed graph, which is a graph, it's a weighted graph, which is a graph. And they studied, they used a measure of importance of nodes, which is called between the centrality, which in information networks measures how important a node is for the transmission of information inside it. This is a very important issue. What, in, what about football? Or soccer? Look at football here. So, uh, they said, they, they found the, between the, the computer, the between centrality of each other players, and this player is the one where, when the other players don't know how, what to do with the ball, then they just give it to this one. Maybe it's not the one that scores the most goals, or the, the fastest runner, or, it's just the one who knows always what to do. So apparently in the Netherlands was this one, four, number four. I don't know if was that. And in Spain there were two players back in 2010, Iniesta and Chan, who were probably the best players at that moment. So the, this research team said if the Netherlands want to stop Spain, they need to stop these two players without close to the danger zone in the Netherlands and a very good player, the top players. If Spain needs to stop the Netherlands, uh, they need to stop them too. And they will and they will stop the, the game of the Netherlands. And, and that happened. And then so their bet was it would be Spain who will uh, play most of the game, but it doesn't necessarily mean they will win. Football is a special sport, uh, but in the end they won. The Spain won this 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 final. There was an octopus who said that. Do you remember that? There was a famous octopus who was uh, uh, guessing who will win. Yeah, okay, the octopus is dead now, and these people still making guesses and a lot of money, you know, uh, but because octopus is dead for years. Uh, these people are uh, working for the. Uh, Premier League in, in England for the culture and to be for the Liga in Spain too. And this is roughly we apply to games. Mm, like football, to sports. There's lots of people working on mathematics and sports and they use a lot of graph theory. So this is a very nice application. The second question is about uh, edge, features of the edges. What is the most important edge? Do you see, do you see the network up there, the small one? There is an edge that is more, more important than the others. It's the red one. Why is that more important? Because if I cut this edge, then I divide the, the network into isolated pieces, which only happens with that connection. It doesn't happen with the others. So this is a special connection. And we sometimes, when we want to study network, and we want to know which ones are the special connections. So this is very interesting for studying groups of children. Or, or groups or a class or, or something like that. This example, I always put this, this kind of examples, is a work back to, I think, 2017, yeah, maybe 2015, about disease transmission via airports. Uh, this is pre-COVID. 
the, the study we have done with H1N1 in 2009, and with this SARS virus in 2003. Okay. And the question was, how does affect to the expansion distribution of the virus via the airport? Uh, the fact of uh, catching flights, cancelling flights, or closing airports. So they, they, they were two different things. Closing an airport may be, may be high damage for, for the uh, uh, traffic. You assume you close Frankfurt and Madrid, for instance. The, the, the whole uh, traffic in the world will collapse. Okay? But you can cancel all flights between Madrid and, and Frankfurt. And, and that will not to the traffic. Okay. Uh, so they started this. And they found out that in certain, in certain circumstances, uh, cancelling flights was as effective as closing airports, and much cheaper, much, much, much cheaper. So sometimes it is important to, to study this kind of questions. And the third kind of questions is features of the network as a whole, the structure of the network itself, not just the nodes or the edges, but the networks. One of the main uh, areas of research here is community detection. So if, this, if within this graph there are some nodes that are more related among them than with respect to the rest of the network. So there's a community. Uh, see in this network, how can we detect communities? Here? It seems there's a big one here, but in the end, this, these networks are wrong here. But networks normally are just numbers and matrices. That, how do you detect that? So, uh, community detection algorithms are very important. And they were used in um, uh, advertising, in network advertising. So, normally, when you uh, surf in the web and in a social network, you receive advertising, don't you? And those adverts uh, come from normally three sources. One is for three reasons. One is What's your navigation history? So if you were looking for flights to Barcelona, you will normally, uh, when you read the newspaper or you're in the network, you will see more and more adverts about Barcelona or flying to Spain or flight. This is one source. Another source is mm, companies that pay uh, for the advertisements and you will see them. And the third one is based on what are visiting those people, those members of the network that are similar to you. Because they detect that if you, if, if the people are similar to you, they, they like sports shoes, you may like them too. Mm -hmm. So they, they send you this output. And this is done via this, this community detection. I don't have the time, but it's very interesting. I, 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 I would recommend you to watch this uh, Netflix documentary about the um, Cambridge Analytica case that was used here. And the Cambridge Analytica was this company who, via the study of uh, psychological profiles uh, detected or built up from uh, Facebook lives and so on, and the behavior on Facebook, they devised a way to influence uh, the vote of people. They did it with Brexit and all, and they did it with Trump and all. So this is a very interesting document, and roughly replacing one, a very important one in this case. It's a very interesting document, I recommend you to look at it. So this was the math. Everything is fine so far? So ants, I put uh, ants pictures just to remind me. I love this picture. Mm -hmm. I love this picture. Do you know what this is? This is a dead ant. That's why I love this. And what is this? It looks like a scarf or something. But it's not. This is a fungus. Is that a word? This is a fungus called, um, what's it called? Ophiocordyceps unilateralis. Ophiocordyceps. What does this fungus do? They live in the soil, um, on the ground. I don't know what do, make the friends, whatever. 
So they're, they're doing this from these things. And then a uh, uh, group of ants. Group of ants, or all, all the insects. And there's this particular fungus climbs on, on the land and takes control of the plant. This is called zombification. This, this fungus makes a zombie out of the ant. So the ant, which has no longer control of its life, if she had a half, uh, climbs to a branch like this, bites the branch, you see? And dies them on, on, on a big height. And so the fungus comes out of, of the ant and then spreads its spore so, so it reproduces. That's amazing. So you're taking control of a complex being. Mm -hmm. An ant is much more complex than a fungus. So it takes control of a very complex being, living being, and zombifies it. In order to better reproduce. So, yes, yes. so I love it. But, but it raises the question can, in a network, uh, say, the analogous fungus, can a simple organism change the behavior of the whole organism? Can a brood, say, zombify a whole How is the mathematics? And there's, there's some experiments here. This is experiments of the one third, one third, three third, three thirds. And this, this was a very nice experiment. So this, is, is, this was kind of a video game uh, played on the internet. And each turn, it, it, the game is played by two players at each turn. And on each turn, uh, you play with another player, and you receive a picture of a person, a photo. And you do have to name this person. If you coincide in the naming, then you receive money, or points, whatever you win. If you, if you don't agree on the same name, you don't coincide, you cannot speak to the other okay? If you don't coincide, then you lose. Okay? That, that's the game. And then uh, and next, the next picture comes, and you play with another person. Each person, each, each picture, you play with a different person. Is it on the screen? Are you guys playing on this? No. Yes, yes. Um, so the, the researchers tried to force some things. So whenever this this picture appears, let's call this person Beth. First. Let's fourth them. So they spoke to a, a minority group and said, whenever you see this picture, you name it Beth. No matter what. And we'll see if in the end the whole group adopts this name. Okay? And this is the, this is the results. So this. Yes. If, if here in the horse of the vaccines, we have the size of the minority group. And this is the success rate. So the new name was adopted by what was the of the whole population. See, when the minority group is small, 10%, 20%, then the effect is not big. To the medium or less, it's, it's not big. But certainly it has to be If the minority group is one fourth, I said one third, is one fourth, then uh, everyone will be the So they really made a kind of lobby. This. Is this used in real life? Because this is a very controlled experiment. It's a very controlled experiment. It's, it's not easy to extrapolate the, the proportions of this experiment. But is it? Uh, can we find situations where this is used? And there is. In workplaces. In workplaces, normally you have this coffee machine or coffee room. So yeah. you can, and there's people that are. I don't know in your countries, but here in Spain, people like that. They don't clean that, they never clean. If uh, a, a fourth of the, of the employees always clean and always clean their staff, their own staff, and others' staff, then in the end, everyone uh, starts cleaning. So it's a way to, to improve the uh, civility of the person in the workspace. And this is used like this. In, in many a bit more surprising, at least for me, is the sort of one. This is by, in, in a book by Taleb, Nassim Nicholas Taleb, he's from Lebanon, I think. He's a mathematician and economist. He's very good. He's very good. I like his books. Uh, he wrote the black swan, anti fragile, and different books. This one, I don't know the name in, in English. Uh, in Spanish, it's the Hassel Appeal. I can. 
So what, he's very, very, he's a drama queen. <laughs> he's very excited with his works, but the ideas are deep. That's been sharp. I, I like him, not the way he writes, but I, I like his name. Amos is the most, the most intolerant wings in the these big words. The dictatorship of the small minority. What, what was the, 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 the situation that Taleb is referring to? He tells the story, he was in a conference like this. In, I think it was, it was in the, in the United States, uh, America, I think it was in the Northeast coast. Jersey, this, this kind of place. I like the work, the work, the work, the work, the work. That's the So he was in a conflict. And he was the coffee man. And he was chatting with some colleagues. And some of the colleagues asked, asked him, I, I think it was uh, orange juice or something like that. And then he walks to the, to the table, to the desk, where there was juice and stuff. And he remembers that his friends, uh, uh, only it's a caution, you know. It's, it's, uh, there's a certain way of, of elaborating the, the uh, food and etc. So it's uh, uh, caution, and I don't know how to do it. Uh, but it's caution. Everyone understood. So he just checks whether this juice uh, is caution or not, and there is a sign. I think it's a U in some way. So he checks, and um, okay, it was. So he took it to his friend and said, "Oh, wait." The first attempt, he did a by chance, get a kosher juice. So he goes back to the table and checks everything. Everything was kosher. So, okay, maybe he went to conference. So the, the catering is, is made by one company or whatever. Okay, it's not. Then, but he's very curious. So he went to the supermarket and checked. And almost everything is kosher. So he said, what's the percentage of population in the northeast of the United States that demand kosher food? It's three percent. That's the, that's the, the, the small minority. I avoid this this and that's the small minority. And this is a very a very small portion of the population that changes the behavior of the population. Why? Under which circumstances is this done? And he studied this and saw several uh, phenomena around the world in which cer certain circumstances uh, coincide with that, uh, so that this kind of behavior happens. And these circumstances are the minority is very determined to, to this change, to this behavior. The minority is very The vast majority. I don't really care. I don't care. I, I'm not a, say, a, a, a kosher eating community, but I don't care uh, if you mean Jews, it's kosher or not. So, uh, okay. third, uh, the society, the group, is complex enough. And there's mathematical ways to measure complexity. There's several ways to mathematically measure complexity. So, third, uh, Characteristic is this society is complex enough. And fourth, the minority is uniformly distributed among the population. They, they're not a separate group. Uh, so if these if this four uh, circumstances appear, then this kind of behavior can show. Do they? Is, is it used somewhere? It is used, right? And in particular, it is used in the European Union, in the legislation in the European Union, in particular, when uh, giving rights to minorities. So, same for instance, things like same-sex marriage, this, this, this kind of thing. So, rights for minorities, because their minorities are terminated in rights, stupid. The vast minority are not, are not affected by it in a negative way. Uh, this a complex society and uh, this minority is uniformly distributed in the population. So this is used in, in many ways to respect minorities via legislation. So this is also a, a, a very nice use of mathematics when studying. Have you seen this? It's 
amazing. This is an ant meal. Ant meal. This is just a picture from a YouTube. You know YouTube is a web page with lots of videos. So this is a picture from the YouTube web page. And it's an ant meal that you type in later. And so what happens here? There's a line of ants going somewhere to food. And then there is an ant that for some reason, Brandon, uh, she moves back into the line. She locks from the she gets locks from the line and gets back. So since ants follow each other, then they loop. And, and, and this 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 circles, this spiral, and this uh, working in circles, walking in circles. And this Ruminants may die of starvation. Mm -hmm. They may die, and they very frequently die. And this is a group that is more wrong than the individuals. If the ant would be alone, she could get lost. She would never walk in circles until it's death. She would never do it. So that, this is an example of a group that is more wrong than the son of the individuals. Does this happen in the lab? It does. It does. And it's studied in a, in a paper by Wagensberg, from the Wagensberg, from okay. here. Uh, it's called something like the mis collective misunderstanding syndrome or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, something like that. What, in what kind of situation is this? When there is a, a, an institution, a decision institution, like a parliament or, or a town hall or something, that have to make a decision on a technical matter in which they are not experts. Mm -hmm. If they are not experts, it's a technical matter, and they do not uh, consult consultants, mm -hmm. then they are more wrong than they believe with it. And this is measure, mathematical measure, in terms of probability of being wrong. So the probability that the group is wrong is much higher that the joint probability of each other in the middle is uh, This is called this syndrome. The paper is very interesting and very easy to read. This is technical, but it's easy to read. It's by Wagenberg. I think it's Wagenberg and Wagenberg. And I think he wrote it with his um, It's a very good thing. So, this is what gives the title of this to the majority. This is a uh, Phenomenon that was observed, say, seven years ago. It's such a paper, and it's, it's, in the, it's in the archive. For, for you know the archive? It's a repository for math and physics papers. It's in the archive, and so it's on the archive. So, observe this network. We have 14 individuals here, and two, two opinions, two options. Black and red, they know, white and red. Right? So, the majority of this network, the opinion is white, clearly white. It's 11 to 3. It's clear white, clearly white or something to red. But we know that because we can't see the whole network. What about the, the individuals? How can they know what the majority of the network opinion uh, is? So we should ask them. And we can ask them, and they will uh, answer by saying what they see. So let's, let's ask this one. So we ask this one, what's the opinion of this one? And um, he would say, he or she would say, well, it's one red, and, and white, red, white, white. I think in this world, we, we, the opinion is white. This one. There's some red ones. This one. What about you? The white, 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 red, white, white, red. Like red. Yeah, there are some reds, but uh, the opinion here is white. Vast majority is white. What about the mathematician? I don't have one friend that's white. I don't have white, so white. Okay. Uh, if we ask every of these 14 nodes, all of them will observe that the majority uh, is white. This is the same, the exact same network. Same nodes, same connections. I only changed who is the three nodes. Let's make a point. 
What's this unfinished red network opinion? So I have white, red, 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 and white. So you hear there's some white. But we normally so this this number is red. What about you? White, white, red. Okay, I think it's more white. What about you? I mean, I'm white but red, red. What about you? White but red, red. What about you, Adam? Why I'm white but red, red. So here, the majority, the majority of the nodes observes that the opinion of the network is is red, which is clearly wrong. This is a majority illusion. This is a majority illusion. When the majority of the elements in the network observe that the opinion of the majority of the network is one of those ones. I'm not saying who's right. See, if it's red or white, I don't care which is the right opinion. I, I'm just saying this, this uh, network has a majority image. So the, the observation of the network is wrong. Because it's not, it's, it's not the right network. And the majority of the nodes observe it is the wrong. There's, there's a majority image. This happens and this is used. What is the reason behind this, this illusion? Observe the nodes of the, the, the great the grades of the nodes, the, the red nodes. This is a big, big degree. You know, this is a big degree you node, know, that's a big degree. While before this is a low degree you node, know, low degree without a which degree you know, and this is a low degree. So is the you know, also say the influencers of that one? It's the influencers. And we can all be, we can be our influences in your family networks, and your school networks, we all are, and can be. It's not that you need to have a million followers in whatever social network. Of course you are, and then, then there's a responsibility. Uh, one responsibility is for the people who give opinions, and have lots of followers, or have lots of influence, and so on. In other words, is how do we, do we observe which is the majority opinion in this network. We cannot rely on just asking our friends. We should perform some deeper uh, uh, research just to have the right observation of the network. How do we observe a network that we are part of? Mathematics. We study mathematically network, and we can know how the network is. As I, I saw before, importance of nodes, the algorithms to compute the importance of nodes, the importance of connections, uh, the structure of the network, communities, etc. So, making a mathematical picture of the network, we can see it and, and have a, a better picture of the reality of it. It's not, not just an observation of what our friends are saying. Because this happens. You've seen it. You've seen in social networks sometimes there's a crazy opinion. And and it seems that everyone has this new place of opinion, but it's not. It's not. Normally, it is a majority issue. That was very frequent at the beginning of the millennials. Very, very. In Spain, it was very famous. Two, three famous people, uh, anti vaccine mm -hmm. uh, the anti the And it looked like almost everyone was in this opinion. And it's not. It's just a few. This is a majority issue. Second uh, phenomenon, I think. How am I? Do I, do I? Okay, I'm uh, This is more famous. This is the, the bubble filter, the filter bubbles. You know the YouTube, this, this web page I'm talking about, which has lots of videos. So I, I listen to music on YouTube. I love death metal. I love this more music, so it's people shouting and, and guitar distorted. And I, I like this. Uh, so I'm listening to Death Metal Band on YouTube, and the YouTube algorithm uh, recommends me more metal bands or songs, uh, maybe death metal, maybe black metal or trash metal, whatever. But I don't, I don't see any sound. It's not because I don't like it. It's not that I don't like it. It's just the algorithm identified that sounds are far away from the YouTube, so it doesn't offer it to me. Now my neighbor in, in the third floor. She listens, he listens salsa, he likes salsa. So he's there listening to YouTube videos, salsa videos, or Google Blacks, whatever. And, and then the, the algorithm offers him uh, more salsa videos. 
He never listens to any death metal. He doesn't know that even exists. Because the algorithm doesn't show it to him. So we need a de elevator And we speak about weather, and weather, And after that, I show him, oh, look at that. I'm going to mark this, this death metal band. They released a new song, and I show him the, the video of this. Because what is this? So violent, this accent, this bird, <laughs> big bird people shouting and so he thinks this guy is dangerous. This is this is a dangerous mm -hmm. guy, he's crazy. What is this? Violent. I don't go in the elevator with him anymore. And and, and she's, he shows me some of these salsa uh, clips and there's some these people moving all very sexual and they here. <laughs> I, I don't want to get into the elevator with this guy anymore. So we avoid each other. Now, yeah, this is funny because it's music and it's so you take political opinions. Uh, opinions on the, on, on the news. How we get access to opinions on the news or political opinions? Via the internet. And we have these filters. It's exactly the same. The algorithm will offer you those opinions that suit you. Uh, based on your uh, navigation history. So, so we're in a bubble. And within this bubble, we believe reality is that. And it's not, it's just part of it. But then we meet people outside of the network and we do what the hell is people saying? They're crazy. Mm -hmm. And we avoid them. And we separate from each other. And I don't know, I don't think, I know they're not, these algorithms are not designed for that. They're not designed to provide people with scared it's it's, it's under study. Uh, there's a big research going on in this. The effect of all this. We will see conditions that seem possible that have something to do with this power research and society research. And the third thing is probably the, the third effect is the amplification of extremes. You probably saw in the internet and social networks, especially Twitter, that uh, extreme opinions are very loud. Why is that? Because when you, when you post an opinion or you post uh, on a social media, the algorithm will, uh, uh, let's say, will give more weight to, to some of the posts or, or all. This way meaning that they will appear in, in this random of your posts to more elements of the level. And what is this points based? Uh, what are these points based, this rating point based? They're based several things, but one of the most uh, important ones is how many reactions do you see? And extreme, extreme opinions have more reactions than moderate. So the, the conversation in social networks is more extreme. We're not that extreme. extreme but if we join majority issue, the bubbles, the spirit of power, and this amplification of extremes, we have a vision of the society that is not correct. It's just, it's not, just not correct. And then they, they, and, and this, this influences us. And this influences us. So we are reacting to a picture of the community that is not the right one. It's not real. So we need to study the mathematics of it. And people, it's not every one that you study it. But there's experts who can do this and teach all people how to do it. There's lots of tools. Okay. So I finish. Uh, every talk should finish with a black and white picture <laughs> featuring either Einstein, Will Smith, no longer no, probably, um, or <laughs> Paulo Coelho. Probably, yeah. uh, so I love, I love Einstein. I like Einstein. So I picture Einstein uh, and, and the sentence, my like writer, a philosopher, and so So I picture here other Einstein. Uh, with him walking in Princeton in the Institute of Advanced Studies is Good Gather. Good Gather was probably the biggest of the logicians after the Greeks, uh, Ian Wittgenstein. He was. He was the one who determined mathematics is not complete, math is not complete, it's structurally not complete. Uh, Gather had this uh, mental disease that he thought that uh, someone wanted to poison him. It was because of the death of a friend. He believed that people wanted to poison him. 
So he wouldn't trust food in restaurants or in supermarkets. He just trusted his wife, Adele, the food that his wife, Adele, would cook. And Adele was ill for six months. She was in hospital for six months. And could get her the biggest logician of the modern age. He died from starvation. Uh, in six months, his wife was ill. He died. When he died, he waited something like 29 kilograms. So this sad. It's really sad. And that's why I bring this, this sentence by Jesus. Okay? A madman is not someone who has lost his reason. He was perfect. He was perfect. But someone who has lost everything about his reason. Everything about his reason. So the connection with reality. So my question is, how are we doing so? Are we building a body of logic in our networks or are we to talk? Which is a great thing. I love it. Social networks. I, I love it. I was stepping away from this. In some sense. Uh, uh, we no longer to talk to other people in the bars or this way or, or on the supermarket. It's, it, it's not only because it is polite. It's we need to see the life of people that have a life that is very different to us. Otherwise, we're in a problem. And we can lose this everything but our reason. It's like the, the ant mill, you remember? The, 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 the ants working, working in circles. The logic was perfect. They followed the, the next one. Each one is followed by the next one. The logic is perfect. They lost contact with the outside and then they died after generation. So this is my last uh, slide. Now comes the adverts, the spam. And this is my this is my, my email address from the university. I'm always open to a mathematical conversation, invitation to conferences and conflict. I don't do homework. <laughs> Uh, so if someone wants me to do their homework, I will do so. And I'm in, I, I live in the north of Spain, and we speak very hard. So you don't know want to read that in, in, in the video. Big Bang Theory, Van with the B, is the group um, of uh, science shows that we do. Uh, science stand up on all the shows. We've been in Barcelona for the lots of times. Uh, this is Twitter. All oh, this is web page. Yeah, this is a web page with lots of videos. And I, I do have a channel there, it's called Derivando. It's a math channel. Uh, I, do math. Uh, I, I don't teach how to solve math, mathematical problems. It's more a celebration of math. It's like mathematics is part of the culture, and this is the main line of this channel. And uh, Instagram, I didn't know why to use Instagram. Because it was, I, I, I don't post any new pictures of me, almost never. Um, but I, I realize that people think that mathematicians are beings of light that live on top of the mountains and, and they receive the theorem from the gods. Um, and it's not always the case. So uh, I, I use this Instagram account to tell people how is the life of a mathematician. That we go to conference, that we go papers published, papers rejected, that sometimes we work on blackboard, that sometimes we work on lectures, all, all this kind of thing. And I wrote three books, Intelligencia Mathematica, this is about the Spanish and Italian. I wrote any about any letter. Any letter is probably the, the, the most important thing in mathematicians, for mathematicians and scientists of history. Probably her contributions are as important as my UV. Right. Or even more. It's difficult to say because they're different areas. But uh, uh, it's very important. That there's no Nobel Prize in that. So. She's very, very unknown, so you don't need to be And Apocalypse is my So there are a few words from the Spanish speaking people, just a little bit. Ahora es aquí, cuando acabe, es tarde, pero mañana. Pero lo no, no compráis con ustedes. Y si no tenéis dinero, lo robáis. Si lo vais a robar, en, en, una, en una gran superficie, no lo robéis a librerías pequeñas. Vais a una gran superficie y lo robáis después. 
Y si alguien tiene reparitos en robar, que yo he traído dos o tres, a mí no me lo probéis, que si no. So that was it. Thank you very much. Us 
who was the prison of the mm -hmm. And we made communities, uh, we made several, we made up several stories of fictions, we made them to make our groups together. And this is very nice because community, big communities are very important. We can achieve very, very good things together. I mean, national teach religion sometimes in this thing. It's very good because we now have a community. The community is strong community is very good. But this benefit of the community stops when we say our community is better than others, or our community should defeat others. It's nice to have a big community, a strong community. It's not that nice when you separate your community. So this is what we do. Now we have different tools for uh, these products that are very human. I mean, it's not judgment. It's very human. But we should be aware that this, uh, this another thing is very human, that we can improve our way to be. Uh, this uh, networks and social media also are a good way to be in the world, unless things to be all. There aren't any questions or comments or you find out. Oh, there is, yeah. Right. Just, just wondering, just following up your comment and, and your answer, I was just thinking that what happens when the two communities are not that has the, the, the case like that, has access that has the media, that has the technology that has the, the idea that they have the opinions and, and from other people actually is living together with a part of the community that does, that does not have that access. Think about that. <laughs> yeah. Couch. Yeah, well, it's kind of a domination. And it's probably unfair. And at least it's for the world. I, I, I feel I'm preaching here, but I'm not. I'm, uh, I, what, what I was bringing here is how mathematics can be a tool to have a better description of how we go to to be aware of what is really what, And then we act. And that's, that's the philosophers, and that's the politicians, and then we all together can, can figure out how, how, to, how to act. But the first step of a good, uh, of a good way to act is to have an accurate vision of what is going on in reality. And I think math is important here because we live in this complex world, complex in the sense that we have a, a technology layer uh, to, to the access of. So this technology layer is not transparent. It has not. The, the, the mere fact that there is a layer, it has not. And studying this layer is good to at least know that we don't see the picture. So the interest of the, say, the institution uh, at the to uh, the cost of the expenses of people with allergies. Yeah. But yes, you're particularly right. Probably uh, if there was a, so a lobby to, to ban the electoral evidence, that would we, we have to uh, use this mechanism to try to prescribe it. But I don't know if this is the case. Because there is not this only the thank you so much. You. That was a really interesting um, uh, debate video. What's the word? First presentation. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Look, <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's given us a few things to think about too in terms of AMM, because we need to be some of those red dots there. You know? <laughs> make sure we get more information out about that stuff. But the digital world is such a, um, a world that's full of uh, dangers, uh, to my um, view.
you as well as opportunities. So it's about, like you say, it's about being able to break that up. I don't want to turn to uh, Professor Media and Pessimist in the question of the so I'm, I'm optimistic. Yeah, you're optimistic. That's great. Good. <laughs> well, we will think about it throughout the, uh, the conference. Thank you again. This was a really interesting way for us to start.